We're going to go ahead and go into a short class before the bishop starts. Um, the title of my class is Love Thy Neighbor as Thyself. Love Thy Neighbor as Thyself. Now, this class is not going to be taught from some Joel Osteen standpoint. <laughs> you know, God loves everybody. Nope. That's not what we're teaching here. Uh, that is not what we teach in IUIC. Um, first of all, brothers, what is love according to the Bible? Well, uh, let me get a new brother with a scripture. Got a brother with his hands up back there. They called it. I just want the scripture to come out. Uh, shalom, leadership. Shalom, sir. Name running to uh, First John five and three. No. Go yeah. ahead and read that. It say, "For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous." I praise it. So that's what love is according to the Bible, and that's what we teach. Again, I started off by saying this is not some you know God loves everybody that we teach in our UIC. Uh, give me Sirach twenty five and twelve. Sirach 25 and verse 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So when we talk about love according to the Bible, it says the beginning of fear of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love. You can't even start to love if you don't fear God. That's where it all starts. The fear of the Lord. The definition of love. First of all, love is a verb denoting action. And the definition I have here that I wanted to pull out was it says to conform to in habits or conduct. To conform to in habits or conduct. And what that means is conform to what? We just wrote conform to the commandments. Every single aspect of our lives must conform to the commandments, and that's what I wanted to bring out in that. So before we can love uh, our neighbor as ourselves, what, what must we first do? Right, but there's something else I'm trying to pull out. Before you can love your neighbor as yourself, I mean, the title is Love Thy Neighbor As Thyself. So before you can love someone else, what must you first do, officer? Mike say, you first have to love yourself. That's right. That's right. And that's something that we as Israelites have issues doing when we first come into the truth. And what are some of the reasons why that we don't love ourselves coming to the truth? Can somebody give me some reasons why? Officer, you're right. Shalom, sir. Shalom, leadership. Um, hating one another. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. That inward hate for your brother that you don't, you keep inside as a secret, mm -hmm. but inside you're hating. And that's forbidden by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Give me some more. Who else got some? Officer, you cool. Because we were taught that uh, love is like that first definition, that it was the affection that we have uh, for each other. So a lot of times we equate love in the world to sex, mm -hmm. uh, to things that we were given, mm -hmm. uh, to praises that we get from people, so forth and so on. So we were never taught what love really was. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Officer Kareem? Shalom, leadership. Shalom, sir. Uh, we've been taught to hate ourselves in America, and it's captivity, so. Right. Officer Elio. Shalom. That's what I was going to go into. That we, we're taught to hate ourselves. We're broken. You know, um, you know, people are scared of us. We're supposed to be scared of them. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we're not supposed to be nothing on this earth. Mm -hmm. That's what they try to teach us in school. All praises. All good. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Jeremiah 17 and 4. This is one of the main reasons why. We hate ourselves. 
the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Read it from the top again. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. Stop. What does that mean? Officer Amasa. Shalom, leadership. So our heritage is found in Sirach 17 and 11. And so we've been discontinued from that. That's what it means. Yes, sir. Officer? Um, losing our heritage, uh, we've been disconnected from everything that um, says that we are a people, that says that we are uh, alive. We, we lost all of it. Yeah. I'll praise us. You guys on my officer? It's a long leadership. So uh, long. Our heritage is God's commandments. Mm -hmm. And based off the, what the class is about, loving thy neighbor, one of the commandments is love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, sir. We lost that through captivity. Yes, sir. We lost that... Uh, uh, the Willie Lynch letter. They mm -hmm. taught us to hate each other, mm -hmm. like what the officer said earlier. That's exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, self-hatred. Most of everybody said it's self-hatred is what it is. And we don't know who, we didn't know who we are before we came into the knowledge of the truth. And that's one of the greatest forms of self-hatred. Well, you don't, you don't even know who you are as a people. So how do you know? You don't even know who your people are. So how can you love your neighbor as yourself? Even when we come into the truth, we might still deal with it sometimes. The Lord brings about different trials and tribulations while we're in the truth. And because we're still being transformed, we don't often handle every situation the right way with our brothers and sisters. We revert back and handle things the way we handled in the world. The first thing we wanted to do was in the world was cut a brother off or cut, cut a sister off. Instead of applying the commandments, which we, we brought out that love was in the beginning, if your brother or sister offends you, the commandments tells us to do what? We weren't taught that. Most of us weren't taught that growing up. Get them before they get you. That's what we were taught coming up. The age that I grew up in, get them before they get That's what we were taught. Not if your brother offends you, go to them. Most sisters were taught, go to every other sister except for the sister that offended you. Let me bring three or four or five more people into it except and never talk to the person who you had the offense with. That's not loving your neighbor as yourself. Can I say something? Yes, sir. Um, that's um, discontinuing from your heritage. That's um, that is severely heavy, because if you have a heritage, if you don't have a heritage, what do you have to pass down? Nothing. <laughs> you have nothing to pass down. You have you have sin to pass down. You have the wrong way to God a family to pass down. You can't teach your son how to properly raise a family. You can't teach your um, daughter how to nourish a family. Your life is nothing but destruction. That's exactly what it is. And so instead of passing down heritage, instead of passing down a life and a way to live, you pass down death. You pass down turmoil. You pass down hatred. And without these commandments, that's exactly what our generations have been passing down. Officer, give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Read it from the top again. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So, brothers, this is what we deal with. We're beat down you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, well, six days a week before the Sabbath. Most of us will beat down all week long 
And then when it comes time to deal with your brother, because of that oppression all week long, some, I'm saying sometimes, sometimes that oppression causes you to act out in a different way than what the commandments tells you how to act out. Sometimes we get puffed up and we want to fight a brother because he told you to sweep the floor. That's oppression. <laughs> That's mainly because of oppression, number two, because you don't know how to control your spirit. But for a lot of us, it's the weight of oppression all week long and being able to deal with that according to the commandments. It's not easy to do for every man. Some of us have to deal with it more often than others. You know, some people have their own business, but we all oppressed. So I don't care if you have your own business, you still oppress. Give me uh, Psalms chapter 107, verse 39. The book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. 107 Sorry. and 39? That was 106. 107, verse 39. Again, they are menished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. A.V., pull up that definition of menish that I sent to you. Definition of minish, to make less as in, as in size, amount, or degree. Make fewer in number, diminish in power or influence. That's the part I want, to diminish in power or influence. Brothers, do we have power or influence in this nation? Apart from the commandments, let me say, do we have power and influence? It's because we have the commandments that we have influence. But apart from it, we have no power or influence in these, against these nations. Read that verse again, officer. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. It says we are minished, which is a short for diminished, and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. Uh, was it Hosea uh, 5.15? Give me Hosea 5.15. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Yeah, so I, this is basically going here to get to the root because when you talk, again, going back to the title of the class, love thy neighbor as thyself. If you're truly trying to love your neighbor as yourself, you have to get to the root. If you have issues getting along with your brother and your sister, your fellow Israelites, then you need to get to the root of the problem. The root within you. Don't look at the root within your neighbor, the root within yourself. And most of it lies with self-hatred. When we're alone and it's just us, we don't like, some of us don't like what we see. And then if somebody calls it out, then it's going to another level. Why? Because the truth hurts. The truth cuts. It's supposed to. It cuts. Scripture says the word of, word of God is powerful, sharper than two-edged sword, piercing. It's supposed to hurt. If we never come in contact, if, you know, if no one ever speaks the truth and causes us to look ourselves in the face, then we'll think, you know, you, you can just float through this life and you're going to get the kingdom. But the true test is when somebody calls you out, then how do you handle it? Brother, you got an anger problem. What you going to do about it? You ready to fight? Or do you confess it? Yeah, I do. You just proved it. When you had to fight, you Can you help it. me with that? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I mean, we've seen it time and time again, you know, that, uh, you know, some of us have been in the, been the truth, you know, five, six, seven years, but we're all still babies. Uh, at the end of the day, we're still babies. But we've seen, we've experienced, and we've seen some things happen in the short years that we've been in the truth, and we've seen it time and time again, the slightest little thing, you know, when your sin gets pointed out, brothers and sisters ready to fight, and you don't want to talk to each other no more. How many of us, I got, I'll raise my hand to it. I've been down there. Y'all don't have to raise your hands. I, I know it was you. <laughs> every, every last one of you. I'll raise, I'm raising my hand for you. If it hasn't been you yet, it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. Every man's work, what? What does the scripture say? Every man's work will be made manifest or will, we, or will be tried for what sort it is. <clears throat> Give me uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. So I came up in, you know, I'm, I'm one of the aged men in here. Uh, you know, we came up in a, we came up in a time to where, um, we grew up in neighborhoods and neighborhood uh, where we got discipline. In, you could get beat at any house you went to when I was growing up. And that's that's <laughs> that's that's a lost art in neighborhoods today. Now they scared to look out the window for these young kids. They won't even go on the front porch with these young kids now. But when we grew up, you were subject to get discipline at every house you went to. To a small extent, that was scriptural. When the scripture, Zephaniah 2 and 1 says, gather yourselves together, those people were looking out for each other. The other nations going to govern us with a, a pistol or a stick, but we were governed, our neighborhoods were good. We were governing our own self. And that's part of the reasons why the curses came, because we couldn't govern ourselves. That's why we're still being afflicted today because we can't govern ourselves first and we don't govern our neighborhoods. We don't govern our people. We're afraid to discipline somebody else's kids. If, you, if one of y'all got some bad kids around here, keep them away from us. I don't call nobody kids bad, but if they got the devil on them at the time, if they need a whooping, they need a whooping. That's the way we grew up, y'all. So now, brothers and sisters, be ready. Don't touch my kids. Bro, daddy be ready to fight you. Mama ready to fight you. We trying to save your kid's life. And it was more than that, too. You um, you got a whooping for everybody um, in the nearly neighborhood, and you had to get it when you got home, too. <laughs> yeah, you did. I knew it because I went through it too. That's the way I was raised, man. So you knew it. You knew everybody else, whosoever house you was going on over, you going to get it from their mom and their daddy. And then when your mom and daddy found out about it, you already knew what's going to happen. <laughs> so you were all sad and stuff, you know, walking slow. Because you knew as soon as you got home, they already said, mm -mm, go to the back room. You already know what's going to happen. I don't want to hear nothing. Don't, don't start crying. Don't start crying. Yep. So, yeah. But it's no more of that. It's no more of that. That's why you got these um, wild bulls in the net, as the scriptures talk about. Because they have no discipline. They have no fear. The fear of the Lord is not in them. Yeah. You got Philippians 3 and 13, obviously? Yes, sir. Book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So that's what that's what a lot of us have trouble doing coming into the truth. Read the last part of that again. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. No, start at forgetting. Forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So it says forgetting those things that were behind. Uh, a lot of the men, you know, uh, I think I can speak for most of the men in here came up with our fathers. 
most of the men, probably the majority of the men here grew up without fathers in the house. So when you come into the truth, it's hard for you to accept the fathers that are set up for you. The even the more difficult part for some of the men is that the fathers that are set up for you might be younger than you. But they can father you in the scriptures. They may not have some of the life's experiences, but they can father you in the scriptures. That's why you should be, you know, be careful about who you counsel with with certain things. You're the one who picks your counselor. The scripture says, despise not thy youth. So there are young men, older men who come into this truth. We have to become as babes, according to the scripture, and humble down to the leadership that the Lord has set up before us. And that may be a younger man sometimes. Some older men struggle with that. You can't tell me nothing, young, young buck. You were still in Pampers. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. Yes, according to this Bible, yes, he can. Because when you walk through the doors, you don't know nothing. Um, I was telling the brothers like that on, on the street, the same thing, obviously, um, when it comes to those um, older men. I was like, listen, the most high is older than you. I don't care how old you get. The most high is older than you. You can still get that spiritual whooping from the most high God. You are not too old to get that whooping. You know, so you have to um, humble yourself. That's what we tell, that's what we, um, that's what we were talking about on the street. Like it says in Job 32, um, verse 7. All right. Um, okay, go ahead. You can get it. Can I get a scripture? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you have to learn how to discipline your spirit because we're not we're not taught how to respect each other, but the Bible teaches us how to respect each other. The book of Job, chapter 32 and verse 7. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Right, so that man, the most of the years is supposed to teach wisdom. And if that wisdom is not the wisdom of these scriptures, then you have to learn again. I mean, I know they have life experience and all that, but it needs to be filtered through the scriptures. It has to be filtered through righteousness, through the eyes of the Most High God. That's what the problem is. We had an older man at camp. He was 51, and he was saying certain things, but they weren't. Um, I can tell by his speech that he wasn't, um, he didn't have the wisdom of the scriptures. And so what he was talking about, you know, we took him to the scriptures of what he was talking about or tried to take him to the scriptures. But it showed right there that our older men lack wisdom. They lack wisdom. They lack discipline because the Bible teaches you how to be disciplined and it teaches you how to pass down that discipline from generation to generation. That's what the problem is the lack of passing down our heritage. That's what make, makes us hate each other. That's what makes us frown at each other. That's what makes us shoot each other in the head. That lack of discipline, that lack of knowledge, and that lack of loving ourselves. Um, keep reading. Is that it? Yes, sir. On the verse. Oh, that was it? Yes, sir. Okay. That was it. Let me read the scripture on that real quick. Go to Sirach chapter 42, verse 8. I, li I like how you said, you know, and it's not to discount anybody's life experiences, um, but, you know, with those life experiences, some life experiences was just evil as hell, you know, and those are not the lessons uh, that you pass down from your age or from your, your, your years of life on this earth, all right? Um, Sirach chapter 42 and verse 8. Sirach chapter 42 and verse 8. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. That's why the scripture says, be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. Go ahead. And the extreme age. And the, and the extreme aged elder brothers and sisters. Right? Come on. 
that contendeth with those that are young. Because they will contend in it. You know, my, my years up at the table, it has happened. It has happened. You'd be surprised that, that, that there will be that contention that comes because, you know, 40, 50 years worth of foolishness that you had in the world and in a year, two years, three years coming into the truth, you got 40, 50, 60 years of foolishness in your brainstem that have to be purged and filtered through the scriptures. But there are younger men that have been in a heck of a lot longer than you that have wisdom in the scriptures that they've applied or they've been corrected on things that you're going through right now that they can say, yo, bro, I, you know, I, I, sir, I understand you won't do X, Y, and Z. I wouldn't do that. Oh, you can't tell me nothing, young, you know, like you said, young, but I don't know who say young buck no more, but whatever. You know, With you can't tell, how you going to tell me something? He ain't been on this <laughs> earth but 22 years. Yeah, but the brother been there, done that. He been there, done that. And he trying to help you out. That's why God said, read it again. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish and the extreme age that contendeth with those that are young. Because the extreme, because it happens. The extreme age contend with those that are young. That's why Christ said it's hard to put new wine, I'm paraphrasing, put new wine in old bottles, right? A lot of, in, right, and wine, yeah, another one says wine skins. Um, read on. Thus shalt thou be truly learned. And but the brother the brother or the sister that does take the wisdom that they're receiving from that young brother or sister, it says, thus shalt thou be truly learned, come on. And approved of all men living. Now, it, ain't in, it ain't in everything. It ain't in everything. But, the, the, again, the filter has to be the scriptures. That's why, Timothy, and I'm not going to hijack your class. I'm going to just say this last point. That's why, remember, um, Timothy being set up over the church. Young brother. I don't know how old he was, but we know he was young. Paul had to school him like, yo, you're going to have aged brothers and sisters that's going to be in the congregation. He had to, to teach, uh, Paul had to teach Timothy how to deal with the older brothers and sisters. He didn't treat them as fathers and treat them as mothers, the younger ones as brothers and sisters. You don't talk to them like they 18. You don't do that. You have to be an example. I think it's 1 Timothy 4. You don't got to get it, but I think it's like 1 Timothy 4 or something like that, um, or maybe 5. Um, you don't talk to them like they're 18 or like they just graduated high school. You don't do that. You don't be disrespectful. But at the same time, if the fire got to come, it's got to come. And that's 1 Timothy 6, all right? So uh, that's it. Go ahead, Austin. Um, yeah, Job. Job, go, go back to um, Job 32 and 7. There was more on that. First is 8 um, and 9 because it explains exactly what um, the officer's bringing out and what um, I'm trying to say as well. Hey, bring it out. The book of Job, chapter 32 and verse 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Right, so there's a spirit in man. The Most High God knows that a man has that um, prideful spirit, that elder man may have that prideful spirit, but he gave that, that wisdom of the Scriptures. So that's what it's talking about, that he gave him the wisdom of the Scriptures to bring it out, to help you out, to let you know that you are an Israelite according to the Bible. And this is what you have to do to get the kingdom of heaven. And that man that is years and years of experience never knew that. He never knew that. So though that man has to learn how to humble himself so he can get that knowledge. Because it wouldn't be long before he, if he is humble enough, it wouldn't be a long time before now he's out there as an officer, a soldier, an officer, and now he's teaching another man. You could be teaching somebody the same age or somebody that's younger or somebody that may be a couple of years older than him the same thing with the knowledge that he has under his belt. You know, keep reading. Great men are not always wise. But great men are not always wise. That's those men that's always despising you. You know, you can't tell me nothing. You know, I've been down this road, young buck, you know, and all that other foolishness. Now they walk away, but they're walking away from that salvation. They're walking away from rulership. That's what they're walking away from, knowing who you truly are. You're walking away from godly experience, godly wisdom. You know, so, you know, a lot of these men have to take heed of the word of the Most High God. Hey, officer, you mind if I interject real quick? Yes, sir. That was more. Can I get uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 21? <laughs> That's more than 
Hey, you in the spirit, officer, because uh, I, there's some brothers, you know what I'm saying, in my walk, as I grew up in this walk, uh, there were issues, and you would see that, because in the world where, you know, that's actually a Christian mindset, where they say you respect your elders, so you, a lot of elders don't have no respect for the youth. That's right. Okay, so... Um, they teach, they teach you about the hoary head, but they never teach you about the young men that came up under Christ, that came up in this walk, that were young men, that were put before for a lot of elders. You understand? So can we read that? What, what verse was that? Luke chapter 10, verse 21. 21. The book of Luke chapter 10, verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. So who are the wise and the prudent? Those are the brothers with the experience, life experience. Not biblical or spiritual experience. Life experience. That's a big difference. Okay, read. And has revealed them unto babes. Unto who? Babes. You see that? They've been, that's why we see a lot of young brothers on the corners. You see a lot of times, honestly, when you look at Israel United in Christ, when you go to the men's conference, the, uh, the younger men outnumber the older men. You see that, and that's prophetical. So if you're an older brother and you deal with that spirit, just be more spiritual-minded. Think about the scriptures when you see these young men being raised up before you and take and take uh, consideration for the scriptures. You understand? And apply that. That's all I got. And, and on the flip side, for the young men that are coming up, remember what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4. He said, let, let no man despise your youth, but... There was something behind that, being an example in word and deed and conversation and, and something else, so on and so forth. So it's not to say that, oh, I'm a soldier and you're just a brother. Follow me, listen to me. Or I'm an officer, you're a soldier, because you still do dumb stuff. You have to be an example, just like Paul told Timothy, a, a age brother schooling a young brother, listen, if you want respect, if you want honor, this is how you got to move. This is how you got to maneuver. It don't come just by osmosis just because you got a title behind your name. Because the title be gone, does that mean the respect is gone? Because you've been a, a, a butthole for the last X amount of time since you've been in, the, in, uh, uh, been in the seat of a leader? That shouldn't be the case. But if that's you, you need to fix it. I just pretty much wanted to make a, a statement, cause it, because in um, in disrespecting the young men that's set over us, it's a lack of faith, and it's a lack of self love. Because if we literally seen God reach out the sky and pick somebody up and put them at the table, then they will respect it. But because they don't literally see God picking up people, putting them up there. No matter how young they're putting it, they don't see that God setting that up. And they don't they don't have that faith that on that self-love to say, God care that much about me to set these men up here to guide me and, and, and show reverence to that. And that's and that's all I was trying to say. It's just a lack of faith and it's a lack of self-love that we just that ignorant and and want to be in combat with young men trying to trying to guide us right scripturally. Praises. Uh, I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, when I was when I came into the truth, uh, my sons, our sons, led us to the truth. So they were in the truth before we were. Um, and the Lord, and I, for y'all don't know, Officer Lemuel was my oldest son. Um, little did I know coming to the truth that um, the first trial that I was going to get was, you know, the Lord kept raising him up. You know, and they're still raising him up um, to be one of the one strong leaders in Israel. Uh, but me, as an elder man, I had to submit to his authority with no issues because I was I was raised. I, my father wasn't military, but he taught me how to respect authority, no matter what type of authority, who was in authority. I was taught to respect authority. So I've never had an issue, one issue with no matter who's in a leadership position, submitting to authority. Um, I've never said that publicly, but this hopefully is helping somebody else that may come into the truth in this same type of position. 
that, you know, if the Lord sees fit to raise your, your son up above you, then that's a test to your faith. That's one of the first trials you're going to have to endure. Can you submit to that authority? You still holding Philippians 3 hours? The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but these, excuse me, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Uh, and before, before I go to that again, one more, one more point on that thought I just brought out. That means um, if correction needs to come out, he will correct me, and I will take the correction. That's the biggest test of all, is when the correction comes out, can you take the correction? It's, he's corrected me several times over. I can't tell you it didn't make me mad at first. I, I ain't going to lie to you, it didn't make me mad at first. Yeah, it made me mad at first. But I submitted to it. Why? Because I fear God. Now read what you got again, officer. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So the part I wanted to bring up, uh, going back to getting the thought back, was forgetting those things behind. Before uh, we got that scripture, we went into... Um, you know, I talked about how brothers come in this truth, you know, without fathers and things like that. Likewise, a lot of sisters come in this truth, um, you know, without fathers in the home. And then you end up dealing with your husband based off of the feeling that you, the emotions you still have on the inside of you. Your Israelite man is keeping the commandments is not that father that wasn't in your house. if he's not acting like it. That's some, of, that's some of the stuff our people deal with today. That's why some of the marriages are like they are, because there's hatred in the house. They hate each other. Don't get quiet on me, y'all. <laughs> This is the type of stuff we don't talk, we didn't talk about in the Christian church. That's why we live like devils. Preacher used to say it was tight, but it's right. <laughs> but these, we didn't talk about these things in the Christian church, and that's why we were living like hellions, and that's why we got so much sin to plow through before we start truly keeping these commandments when we come into the truth. It's because we have so many unresolved issues coming to, into the truth. And even in the truth, there's so many unresolved issues. Read it again, officer, just to forget it. Go ahead. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So I went to that scripture. Just for, some things we just have to forget. We got to forget. You got some moms? You want to bring some out? Go ahead. You know, I, I didn't want it to go without saying is that when we come into this truth, we were never told that um, we were the best thing on this earth, mm -hmm. that God held us 
at high esteem. So we don't have any self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And when you come into this truth, we're used to, we ain't used to seeing blacks in leadership. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't think of ourselves as high enough to, to, to be um, thought of that way. And if we don't think of ourselves that way, then we, it's hard for us to, to deal with others. You, you, it's like that black man's up there telling me. But if the white man tell you to do it, you don't question him. That's but right. you question the black man. That's right. You know, we've been taught that. So we got to unlearn. We, 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 we got, like you said, we got we to gotta forget that. And we got to realize what, what God is saying to us. That's right. I'll praise this. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It starts with forgetting those things that are in the past. Now read what you got, officer. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now that doesn't happen overnight. But it starts in the mind. It's, read it again, officer. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I say it starts with the mind because you have to believe that. You have to start to believe that all things are become new. And that you're not the, I'm just going to say, you're not the nigger that they called you. That your family called you. You have to start to believe that you're a new creature in Christ. Read it again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It says all things are become new. That means you are completely new. The, the, the person that they knew, you're not that person no more. But you have to show it in your actions. Your actions have to show it. If you respond the same way you did before you came into the truth, then you may as well stay out there with them. They have to, there has to be a there has to be a difference in you. For you to say all things have become new, that means everything I used to do, I don't do it no more. I'm not a whoremonger no more. I'm not a liar. I'm not a cheat. I'm not a thug. Yes, sir. And that's why it says, if a man. That's why it says, if. Because that man is going to try. That man is going to repent. That man is going to strive to get away from that old man. That's what he's going to do. So it's saying, if any man be in Christ. Because some men, you know, some men, some women, they're not in Christ. They're not. They're just here for show. They're just here for knowledge. You know, they may just be here for a wife, you know, or a husband. And once they get that thing, boom, they out. Straight up. And that's it. It's not about changing your life. It's not about reforming yourself. It's just about you faking the funk exactly what it is. All right, so let's get to some solutions. Uh, Jude, uh, Jude verse 20. The book of Jude, chapter, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Read it from the top again. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your, on your most holy faith. Stop right there. Uh, it says building yourselves up in the most holy faith. Uh, we can come to, you know, Sabbath after Sabbath, class after class, uh, you know, the captain and the bishop, they bring out life-changing 
classes every week, but if we're not applying them, what what profit? What does it profit? Last week we heard the class from the bishop fix the cracks. Every last one of us have cracks. Every last one of us. But if we're not identifying the cracks and fixing them, then what does what does it profit? Jude, uh, Judith 8.24 real quick. Hold that. Get Judith 8.24. The book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 24. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on us. So every officer, every soldier, Every brother in men of valor, every man in this church, read that again. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on, upon us. That's the charge that we have. Read it one more time. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend upon us. What's the greatest example you could ever show any, or give anybody? Loving your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. You got something? Yeah, but uh, living by an example. There you go. The life you live. The greatest example you could show, give anybody, the type of life according to the commandments that you live. What reputation do you have in this truth? What are you known for in this truth? I'm not talking about brothers, you know, you know, falling off, and, but the, the thing about falling off is getting back up. All of us are subject to fall. Uh, go back to Jude. Jude, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Yeah, so build, building ourselves up, with it, we have to build ourselves up. When, it's, when we're not around the brothers and it's just us and the Lord, you got to build yourself up. If you know you deal with lust, you need to be read. You don't need to be looking at the 12 feathers. You need to be reading scriptures on lust. That's how you build yourself up in this faith. If you deal with anger, you study scriptures on anger. Or you're going to get taken out. By the very thing you left uncovered. So what's the, the, the flip side of being um, of self-hatred? Uh, give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. You know, some people come in this truth that's overly confident, and then you get a few scriptures under your belt, can't nobody tell you nothing at that point. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. The book of Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Read that part again. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. He said, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. That's humbling yourself, brothers. 
not being some mealy mouth weak brother, that's not what I'm saying, but humility is necessary. What's the sign of humility? If you're an officer or a soldier and a brother corrects you according to the scripture, what do you do? That's, that that sounds good, but can you do it? When you've truly humbled yourself to these scriptures, that I mean, I'm telling you, bro, if a brother, if you're off in the spirit and you get corrected by a brother, Is your first thought going to be, I'm going to offer some so you, you can't correct me. It, it better not be because you're going off at that point. Titles are for the sake of order. Now, brothers, don't get twisted and <laughs> just start going off by, by, by saying that because the Lord set up order for a reason. We were commanded to to honor those that are in authority above us. So there's a balance to that. Give me Luke 17 and 10. For brothers who get puffed up. Luke 17 and 10. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 10. So likewise ye... When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. So if a, if a brother or sister come up to you trying to heap praise upon you, you haven't done a thing. At the end of the day, you haven't done anything but what you were commanded to do. Read it again. So likewise ye. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Now go to Matthew uh, chapter 25. Start at verse 31 and read down to 40. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them all, on his right hand. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick, thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? Read. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in, Inasmuch as ye have done it on, unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So verse 40 is the point of all that. Read verse 40 again. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto, unto one of the least of these, of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Did y'all get that? Verse 40, I read verse 40 one more time. Verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Okay, so in my Bible, that's written in red, which means who said it? 
That should appear to fear of God in every last one of us and how we deal with each other. I'm going to read it again myself. It says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it to one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Again, I'll say that. If that doesn't put the fear of God in, you may want to check your lineage. You might not be Israel. <laughs> Can I say something right quick? Yes, sir. Okay. So as, as he brought that scripture out, so what does that mean? Somebody give me that. Somebody give me that. What does that mean? Shalom. Happy Sabbath leadership. Happy Sabbath, brother. That's going into taking care of each other. It's taking care of Christ. When you look after your brother, your sister, you're doing that same thing unto Christ. Okay. And what else? That's all I got on that. Karim, I see hand up. Go first. Shalom, leadership. Christ Shalom. telling you, do the things you do to your brother is just like you're doing it unto him. So if I slap yes. Brother Ozai in the face, it's just like me slapping Christ in the face. Yeah. If I steal from Ozai, it's like me stealing from Christ. Christ saying the same thing. 100. 100. So the evil that you do to your brother, you've done it to Christ. Right. So if you didn't Matthew 18 your brother, guess what? You did it to Christ. If you didn't Matthew 18 your sister, you did it to Christ. If you murmur on your brother or murmur on your sister, you did it to Christ. You lie on your brother or your sister, you did it to Christ. So take heed. That's exactly what that thing is saying. Because the evil, if you're doing some evil, if you end some evil, fix that thing immediately. Because you did it unto the Most High God's Son, Christ. I praise this. Uh, Matthew 18, chapter 18, start at verse 1. And read down to verse 6, please. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 1. At, that, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's that humility we talked about earlier. Read. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Again. Brothers, read verse 6 again. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe! So, unto stop, stop at 6, officer. Oh, so, uh, verse 6, it says, Offending one of the little ones, it was better that you die, basically. It's better that you die than offending one of the little ones. Again, that should put the fear of God in you in the way and how we deal with one another. Y'all are not our people. Y'all belong to the Lord. Give me... Um, so, okay, so who is thy neighbor? Give me Leviticus chapter 19. Start at verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Who? Israel. Start at verse, top of verse 2 again. Speak unto the... Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. All right. Now jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thy who? Thy neighbor. Thy who? 
neighbor. So who is thy neighbor? All praises. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. There it is again. The children of thy people, which is who? Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So it's clear who our neighbor is right there, right, brothers? All right. So how do you love thy neighbor as yourself? Give me Romans uh, chapter 13. Romans 13. And give me verse 8 through 10, please. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this is... Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So at the top of verse 9, it, it listed thou shalt not commit adultery against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not kill thy neighbor Thou shalt not steal from thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet what thy neighbor has. And it says, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what that means. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. When you love your neighbor, you won't do those things. Y'all got that? Verse 10, right? Yes, sir. Verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Read. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. All praises. Give me James chapter 3 and verse 18. The book of James, chapter 3 and verse is it 18. Yes, sir. Verse 18. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. What is the fruit, brothers, with a scripture? Soldier. Um, Galatians 5, 21. Let's get that. Hold James 3 to get Galatians 5. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 20. You said 21? 22. I'm asking. 22. I'm just asking. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Yeah, so that's the fruit. So let's go back to James uh, 3 and 18. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 18. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So, brothers and sisters, if you want peace among each other, peace in your house, it says what? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So if you want peace, you have to make peace. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the who? The peacemakers. Uh -huh. For they shall be called the children of God. It says the peacemakers shall be called the children of God. Not the devil raisers. It's, it's uh, the peacemakers. Not those who raise in hell. It said the peacemakers. Not the one that's keeping drama going in the house. <laughs> Not the one that's keeping drama going in the house. Not the one that's, you know, always finding stuff to 
fuss about. No, I'm talking about the one, the peacemakers, the one that's trying to find a solution to the problem. That's the peacemakers right there. Just like when we're on the um, streets and we're preaching, we're, we're um, talking about solutions to the problem. We're not talking about, you know, um, let's go get a gun or something. Let's go get a knife or something, you know. Let's go get um, some C4 or some, or some bomb, make some bombs or something like that. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about... We're talking about making peace. That's what we're talking about. Destruction is coming to the nations. You know, that's that's just what it is. You know, but it's gonna come in righteousness when we get ourselves right accordingly. When we get this spirit right accordingly, then destruction will come to them. Their destruction is going to happen. But first we have to work on this man in the mirror. That's what we have to work on. Or this woman in the mirror. That's what we have to work on. We have to work on getting our house in order. That's what we have to work on humbling ourselves in this word of God. That's what we have to work on. All right. Thank you, officer. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, read verse 1 through 7, and then we're going to jump to verse 11. I mean, after this, I have one more scripture. Say the scripture again, officer. First Corinthians chapter 13, read verse 1 through 7 and jump to verse 11. The book of First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become, a, become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Chari charity Vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly. Read verse 5 again. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Doth not behave itself unseemly. That's your conduct, how we conduct ourselves. Read. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Read. Rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Jump to verse 11. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So this, man, this verse 11, I think it was... Pentecost last year, Deacon IBL did a class on this. Um, I don't know about y'all, but it was life changing for me. It was, you know, I was going through something at that particular time and it was life changing for me. Read that again. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So this truth is about different levels of growth. We have to continue to grow and grow and grow, and it's true. And it says, when I, be, when I was a child, I thought as a child. A child thinks uh, in foolish ways. It responds in foolish ways. Acts foolish. And it says, when I became a man, I put away those foolish actions. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Can I say something on that? Yes, sir. Yeah, because um, those childish things are going to come up throughout your life again. And the Lord's going to see, are you that same child? Are you going to um, start a ruckus again? Are you going to... Um, start a fight, as this officer was saying earlier, because sometimes you got a chance to start a fight. Sometimes you have a chance to destroy somebody's life. 
You know, or you gonna take that chance? I mean, whatever you doing when before you came in here, you know, when you were that child, are you going to, when you're given an opportunity to destroy a man or a woman's life, are you gonna do that thing? Are you gonna be that child that you used to be? So that's letting you know that if you're not going to, if you um, haven't gone through that, that is coming. It's coming once again. It's gonna come again and again. You're gonna get an opportunity to, to um, fornicate, you know. You're gonna get that, you know, opportunity to be that foolish man or that foolish woman again. Or are you gonna be that child again? All right, last scripture for me. Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse 14. Ephesians chapter four and verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So speaking the truth in love uh, doesn't mean it's always going to make you feel good, brothers and sisters. Speaking the truth in love means you might get cut. And then it says to grow, the purpose of it is to grow up into him in all things, which is ahead, even Christ. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.